So just out of curiosity, how many people know about linked data or, or consider themselves, I'm not going to say experts because that's quite demanding, but yeah. <laughs> and how many people have not, don't know anything at all? all right. so, so this talk was planned to be a complete introduction, so I'm going to just sort of introduce uh, linked data, what it is, um, and then talk a bit about some of the stuff that we're doing, ordnance survey with linked data, and then talk about some of the stuff that's going on around the rest of the UK government with linked data. Um, so this is a slide where I potentially get a bit heretical for this kind of conference. But um, one of the things is, I mean, so we saw about three years ago, the government um, started open, the UK government started opening up a lot of data. Um, so there's lots of data being put out there by government organisations. And the, uh, the, uh, the age old joke is that one of the nice things about standards are that there's just so many to choose from. Um, and so even in the geospatial domain, you know, we've got GML is an OGC standard, KML is an OGC standard. Um, if you're into 3D stuff, City GML is an OGC standard. Um, we've also got things like shapefiles, which are they're not really standards, but they're, so they're, really, they're very popular amongst the, the geo community. Um, there's other formats, which are you know, things like CSV, there's XML. Some government departments think PDF counts as a data format, but I'll come on to that a bit later. Um, but the thing is, um, this is where I get a bit heretical, the rest of the world doesn't actually care about GML, KML, shapefiles. You know, you've got the, um, well, you've got, you've got the, the statisticians, they've got STM XML. Um, I think people that do financial data, they've got XBRL ML. And pretty much every little domain out there has got their own ML of some variety. So when you actually, and I think one of the, one of the things is that data is kind of interesting when you, want to, when you bring it all together. So it's sort of more valuable when you start bringing lots of different data sources together to do, to do something. And, and there's a few programs of work that you might be aware of that are about trying to bring data together. So we've got things like Inspire, which is about creating a spatial data infrastructure, about using unique identifiers to reference things in your data, um, and, and bringing it all together. And I'm, again, I'm going to argue that spatial data infrastructure as well, who cares? It's data infrastructure. You know, we want to bring everything together, not, not just stuff in our little geo and environmental bubble. Um, and this is where we start going towards the, the web of linked data. So this is the um, famous or infamous, depending on your point of view, um, scheme. I think it was devised by Nigel Shadbolt and Tim Berners-Lee. It's the, the five-star rating scheme of publishing open data on the web. So to get one star, just publish some data under an open government license. Um, now what some departments did was they wanted to publish a few spreadsheets. So they took a screenshot of a spreadsheet, saved it as a JPEG, embedded it in a PDF document, and then hosted it up on their website. Um, that probably doesn't really count as releasing data. So to, to get two stars, actually release data in a machine-readable format, not as a screenshot embedded in a PDF document. Um, to get three stars, don't assume everyone uses Microsoft. So don't release a .xls file release a .csv file if you can, so use non-proprietary standard. Um, to get four stars, this is where we start getting into the linked data world. So start using um, open standards from the W3C, so start to use things like RDF um, to release your data, and, and use HTTP URIs as basically as the primary keys in, in your data to identify the stuff that's in your data. And to get five stars, um, actually start linking your data out to other people's data so they can follow some links, get some more context, get some more knowledge, which might be useful for their applications. So um, I did actually introduce a few TLAs without explaining what they were. So for those of you who don't know, RDF um, is a W3C standard, so that's World Wide Web Consortium. It's been around for over 10 years. And I tend to think of it as being to the web of data as HTML is to the web of documents. That might be slightly contentious with some people, but sort of the way I think about it. And it's based on a very, very simple data model. Um, so it's based on this idea of um, statements, which are composed of triples. So a triple consists of a subject, um, a predicate, and an object. So that's basically the subject and the object are, are two things. So it could be a a person, place, an organization, and the predicate is just a relationship between them. Um, uh, likewise, you can actually relate things to values, so for example, dates, um, numbers, strings, this sort of thing. Um, each of the, the subjects, the predicate and object, they're all identified by HTTP URIs, and the values are um, they're any XML schema data type. Um, so just, just to give you 
an example. Um, so data.gov published, um, there's some data published. So uh, the person in the bottom right hand corner is my bosses, 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 boss. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, um, and data.gov published some data about senior civil servants. That's an act up somewhere. Um, they also publish data about government departments and Ordnance Survey were publishing data about place. So in, in a sort of the old world, these were all silos of data that were stuck on different websites. There were no connections between them. And if they were, you didn't actually know what those connections were. So in the linked data world, what you do is you identify each of those things. So Vanessa Lawrence has got her own URI that identifies her. Um, this is a URI that identifies Ordnance Survey up here. And this is one that identifies Southampton. So you identify people, places, organizations by these HTTP URIs, and then you, you link them on the web using HTTP. But what you actually do is you, on the linked data web, you qualify what that link means. So on, on the document web, you know, there's lots of links between HTML documents, but you don't know what, what does that link mean. But in, in RDF, you actually say what that is. So they were saying that Vanessa Lawrence has a post in Ordnance Survey, an ordnance survey is based near Southampton. So, and you can imagine as you start thawing more and more of these links, you get a big graph of data. Um, and it, like I say, I think it's a very, very simple data model. Um, so I'm just going to go on now to talk about um, some of the linked data work we've been doing at ordnance survey. So, three years ago, we were asked to open up a number of our products, and we've created um, linked data for three of those open data products at the moment. Um, so the first one of those is a product called CoPoint Open. So CoPoint Open is um, a product which tells you all about postcodes, um, so where they are, which administrative areas they're in. Um, the other one was the 50K Gazetteer, which I'm not going to talk about too much in this talk, but it's basically an index onto our 50K map series. And lastly um, is a product called Boundary Line, which has information about all of the civil voting and administrative areas in the country, so all of the constituencies, wards, counties. Etc. Um, so what we've got in the OS linked data is we're, I mean, hopefully my ambition is to head towards having a URI for every place in Great Britain. But at the moment we have to make do with postcodes and administrative areas. So this is the um, URI for the city of Southampton. Um, this is the URI for um, the Ordnance Survey headquarters. Now when you look up those URIs, so this is a screenshot of if you look up the um, postcode for Ordnance Survey HQ. Um, so you get back some nice um, HTML, which has a few facts telling you um, stuff about that postcode. Uh, not surprisingly, we've got a map showing you where it is. Um, it's got some information, for example, telling you that this postcode is in the district of Test Valley. It's in the county of Hampshire. It's also in England. Uh, this is what you get if you go from a browser. So if you go from a browser, it assumes you're a human or sort of a close approximation. You want some HTML. Um, but if you went from a linked data client, um, you would actually get back RDF for this information. Um, and likewise, this is some of the information for the, um, for the administrative geography. Now, one, one of the things we put into our linked data, because in the early days, um, not many linked data wasn't very suitable for geospatial data, because not any of the, the triple stores, which is the database that holds RDF, not many of them had the uh, capability to do spatial indexing. Um, so what we did was actually pre-computed a lot of the um, implicit topological relationships and put those in the data. So for example, if you look up an administrative area, it'll tell you everything it contains, everything it's within, and everything it touches, well, as, long, as long as that makes sense within a particular geography. So that's some of the stuff we've got in the OS linked data. Um, we've got a number of different APIs that you can use to inter interact with that data. And actually, as we're an open source um, conference. I mean, this, this is entirely built on open source software. So the first one we've got, we've got a simple uh, search API, which was built on top of Apache Solar. Um, I just let you type in a place name and gives you, finds you the URI for that place. And you can do some very simple spatial queries in that. Um, another more interesting one is we've got a, a query API. So we've got um, a Sparkle query endpoint. So Sparkle is to link data as SQL is to relational databases. So that's the, the query language of choice. And that um, if you're interested, it's built on open source software called Apache Jenna, or a database called TBB. And we've also got a couple of other APIs, which I'll touch on a bit later. Um, so this is a screenshot of our Sparkle endpoint. So basically what you can do is, in the top window there, you can type in a Sparkle query. Um, 
I won't go into Sparkle too much now. That's a, that's a whole day's worth of tutorial. Um, you can actually choose your response format, so whether you'd like it back as JSON, XML, TSV. And you can either look at the responses here, or this, this thing, which I think is quite useful, actually tells you the GET request it's performing on the API. So should you want to copy that GET request and embed it in your JavaScript or PHP, you can actually then use that to build your applications. Um, one of the other interesting APIs we've got is something called a reconciliation API. So this is a, a random spreadsheet that I grabbed off data.gov, and I think it's the location of all the libraries in the country. Um, and one of the columns, which one is it? So this column here has got um, the, the administrative area that the library's in, but as you can see on that, it's just, a, it's just a string, it's just a bit of text. The thing is, it doesn't then give you a hook into anything else. You know, where If you want to find out what the, I don't know, the European region that that particular um, unitary authority or county is in, it's not very easy to do that, or if you want to find, you know, compare them. These are all very niche queries, by the way. If you want to compare the number of libraries in bordering regions, you can't do that sort of thing. But with, um, with our reconciliation API, you can load a spreadsheet into a tool called OpenRefine, which used to be called Google Refine, and you can turn that, um, so as you've seen, all, all that, that column of place names has now turned blue. So basically what it's done is it's tried to match the string in that column to uh, a URI in the OS link data. So you've now got the URI in the spreadsheet, which means you can then go off and get information from our link data and use that to enhance the data that you've already got. I mean, one sort of perhaps more pragmatic, simple thing is you could go off and grab the, um, the Latin long coordinate for that, and then, if that was a postcode, say, and stick it on a map. So it's basically just a way of hooking into the OS link data. Um, so that, that's just a kind of very brief summary of the OS linked data. Um, there's lo lots of other people doing linked data around the government. Um, the ONS have just published, oh no, I've just stolen their thunder to pretend I didn't say that. They will be soon publishing um, a new linked data site. Um, the LAM registry published linked data, Environment Agency, Met Office soon, hopefully. Um, um, who else? Oh, legislation. So there's actually linked data for every piece of legislation in the country. Um, and what this is actually starting to do is it's actually starting to really um, join up government. So there's actually links to the, actually, yeah, and the Department of Communities and Local Government have been publishing linked data. So they've published something called the Indices of Multiple Deprivation. They've linked that to Ordnance Survey. Um, Companies House have published data, which can be linked to Ordnance Survey. The Environment Agency Bathing Water data, again, has been linked to the OS. They've also linked it to the ONS. ONS have linked theirs to the legislation. So you can now you can see you're starting to form this big web of data across government. And this means if you want to ingest all of this data into an application and use it, because it's all in linked data, because it's all in RDF, it makes it, I won't say easy, but it makes it easier because you don't have to worry about translating between different XML, JSON, random stuff that most APIs gives you back. Um, so this is just an example. This is a screenshot of the Environment Agency bathing water data. Um, and as you, I don't know if you can see, but there's a reference there to the ONS and to the OS. Um, and this is just a little, um, this is a, an API they've built on top of it. So you can actually just put uh, an OS or ONS URI or the, or the free text into one of their APIs and get back a list of all the bathing water quality observations in that particular area. And then you can actually do a slightly more complex one, which gives you, that compares it to the uh, bathing water in neighboring areas. Um, Big data, so I'm not a big fan of the, as we were discussing before the talk, of the, um, the big data terminology these days. Um, but one of the things I think linked data helps with is probably the variety aspect of linked data. Because what you actually get is it's, it's basically designed when you want to integrate data from lots of disparate sources. So you start having this big, big graph of data. Um, which, um, we've, um, we've been using internally, so we've actually been trying to see can we consume some of the data that the government is releasing and use it and ingest it and use it to enhance our data and provide value-added services on top of that. So we, luckily for us, um, there was data about transport, the environment, um, local authorities, crime, weather, business, education and health had all been released as, as linked data and it had all been linked to the postcode. So if you wanted to do some sort of analysis um, at least at the postcode level of different areas around the country, this made it very useful. So um, we actually built a, um, an application which 
I know it's going to sound very GIS-y in some ways. It is very GIS-y. But it lets you more easily do queries um, across a number of data sets, but more complex queries. Um, so this, this simple application was just designed for, say, say you move to a new area, you want to find a house where, where you want to live, you know, very traditional GIS kind of thing. Um, but you want, to, you want to filter it out. So you want to find a, a house in an area that's got low crime, where the um, education, where all the schools have got high Ofsted ratings. Um, maybe it's near a pub. Um, maybe there's, well, hopefully there's low levels of pollute. You get the idea where you can combine all these data sets to sort of really narrow down um, what the areas you want to find. So again, while you can do that in a GIS, while you can do it in a relational database, I would argue, why would you want to? Because this just makes it so much easier. Um, and just another um, point of interest. So when I started off, I mentioned that um, linked data didn't work very well with spatial data. Um, I think, I'm trying to think, probably a couple of years ago now, there was something called GeoSparkle was standardized by the OGC. So GeoSparkle is a way of embedding geometries, so qualitative and quantitative spatial data into RDF. Um, for those of you that are into your GML um, or your WKT, so basically the way you, you put a geometry in RDF is to store it as a big blob of GML or, or uh, WKT. Um, and the idea is that now we've got a standard, people who create the databases that load RDF can start to build a spatial index. And I think uh, a certain popular, big, well, maybe not popular, but a big database vendor um, has actually implemented it in their latest 12C release. And hopefully some of the open source ones will start to follow suit. Um, so just to conclude, I think the, the nice thing about linked data is basically if people start, if we start to have URIs on the web which identify the resources that we're interested in and people start reusing some of these things. So obviously I'm going to be a bit biased here, but I'm going to say if you want to talk about postcodes, use EOS URIs um, and other, other URIs around the world. So, and this means that we don't have the problem of key clashing. So you know if people, two sets of people are using 10 digit numbers for keys, you don't get that problem because you, you've kind of effectively created a global key. And we've got a common um, We've got a common data format now across the web called RDF. Um, it just makes it easier to integrate data. Um, and I think it's actually at OS. It's starting. So I'm, I'm not really a geographer. I'm not really a GIS person. I'm just interested in data. And I think at OS, I'm, it's starting to push us to think just beyond points, lines, and polygons, beyond cartography, but about actually about the data that we've got and what we can do with it beyond. Um, printing out and putting, you know, sticking it on the wall and putting some pins in it, you know, so I'm actually starting to think more about data rather than visualizations of that data. Um, and again, I'd argue at risk of getting into trouble that basically spatial isn't special anymore, really. You know, it's just it's just data, um, but it's really really important. I mean, it's it's not surprisingly been, um, you know, recognised that location is one of the key hubs that everything connects to. So. Um, and what my next talk, you'll actually I'll show you an example where you know location has been shown to be a key integration hub that everything joins into that we can then query across lots of data via that route. Um, and that is kind of a whistle stop tour of all things linked data. <laughs>